let's talk baseball hats and flipping them for profit. Hi, this is Dina with Left Lane Finds and welcome back to my channel. I was listing some baseball hats that I hadn't already listed and I thought, wow, I already have so many of them out. Let's bring out the rest of them and then we can talk about them. If you're an everything seller or if you're a Poshmark seller and you have been sleeping on selling baseball hats, they are kind of a little bit of a bread and butter item. Of course, I don't know what I'm doing yet. I am not an expert on baseball hats, but I pick up what I like. I pick them up if they have certain themes like this one says Detroit Motor City or this one we would recognize. I think everybody knows Hard Rock Cafe and this one says London. This one's pretty cool. And then on the back it says Love All, Serve All. I thought that was pretty neat. So I picked them up, not because I'm an expert on baseball hats, but I think, well, some of these are kind of interesting. So this one back here, of course, there's Taz, the Tasmanian Devil. This is for uh, the Red Wings hockey team out of Detroit. It says, there's no nice on the ice. That's a vintage hat. So I picked that one up because it was vintage. Then hats like this. I picked this one up because I'm like, ooh, that's a Ferrari symbol. And I'm like, it's a racing team, F1 racing teams. I thought, ooh, a Ferrari hat. Let's get that. Even the guy at the counter commented when I got that one. It's so funny. Baseball hats. People love baseball hats. I don't even wear them that much myself, and yet I have a small collection of baseball hats. And I do wear them, and recently I just got another one. Ooh, you know what? That one's not up here yet. I'm going to run down and get some of my personal baseball hats and we can talk about those too. But before I do that, let's talk about the ones I have up here. Now this one is like brand new looking. It's new without tags. It is the Indianapolis Colts. So I have, I have, I think all the different teams represented. I have football, racing, hockey, <laughs> restaurants, <laughs> cities, and look at this one back here. This one is Mercedes-Benz. I'm like, of course, that one's kind of cool in itself. I love that logo on there. And I love that they're embroidered too. This, Well, this one has like a badge on it, but I love that they're, you know, like embroidered and there's just something about it. And then like this one, this is also a hockey team. And oh, and here we go, basketball. So I got like all kinds of teams represented. And then I even have farmers represented. <laughs> Don, John Deere, isn't that fun? I just love baseball hats for that reason. They can be all kinds of themes. They're basically unisex. So even though I list most of these up under men's, I listed all of these up under men's except for that one. That one I did put, put up as a woman's hat in both eBay and Poshmark. I do have all of these like cross posted and so these are sometimes called the bread and butter items uh, to sell because they sell between anywhere like $12 on the low, low end up to um, you know like $18 now every once in a while you get one that is worth a lot more like this one right here is actually worth a lot more but the one I have is not in excellent condition it's got some like marks right here on which I tried to get out but they didn't come out so I just noted that in the listing uh, so this one I did put it up for a high price but about half of what everybody else was asking so we'll see what I get for it uh, when I sell things you guys know I do a solds video and I tell you what I paid for it what I sold it for and on which platform so keep an eye out for all of that now this one I'm not sure somebody in some video somewhere you know you hear things and then you just do things impossible Im impossibly when you're in the thrift store was like oh I always pick up John Deere 
you know, hats. But I know there's different style logos and that has something to do with it. So this hat might be worth $5 or it could be worth $15. I'm not sure. So if I ended up selling it for just $5, then lesson learned for me. I'm still not sure how much this hat is worth. I got to go look it up and see what I listed it for and maybe adjust the price. Um, and at the very least, you know, it's a pay to learn situation. And then what I need to learn is which logo is the one that you get more money for and then keep an, my eye out for that. So there's all kinds of like little nuances. And then another thing I learned about baseball hats is they have different like back straps. So this one's a slide. Oh, this one says nothing runs like a deer, which is pretty cool. And let me see if I can. So this one, this is what's called a fitted hat. So it has a size on there. It says seven, seven and five eighths XXL. And it is not adjustable. And this one says 1973 on the back. Let me see what I got here. Okay. So this one's what you call a snap back. So those are older and more vintage. In fact, this one is from 1991. So we're going to learn a little bit more about hats just in general. The other thing I learned is like, well, let's go, let's stick with what we were doing. Oh, so this one is, we're not allowed to say the word and you cannot put this word. We all know what this is, right? You know that sound? You cannot put that word in your listing or you'll get a Vero and you'll, your listing will get taken down. So that is an official branded word that you cannot use. You can say hook and eyes, but you cannot say what that is, but you guys can hear the sound and you see what I'm doing. So you know what I'm talking about. So again, snapback, you know, um, that makes them adjustable. And if, initially I didn't know what's the difference between a slide and a plastic snapback. Well, it, it does help age the hat or give an age to the hat, or it's a particular thing that, that people are looking for. Um, again, I'm still not an expert, so I'm still learning. Any comments you want to put down below telling me more about hats or anything you know? Like, I wasn't sure if this was truly vintage hat or made to look vintage. You know, that kind of thing. If you can give me any more information, that would be great. Um, I do have a video, and I will tag it up above, showing you how uh, to clean baseball hats because some hats like this one have a plastic insert and can be thrown right in the washer. And then other hats like this one, it's cardboard in there and you would not want to throw this in the washer. So I hand wash this one, that one, and this one. And I show you all four of these hats, like how I clean them. So make sure to check out that video on how to clean baseball hats. So put all your comments down below because I love reading your comments. Now, I'm going to stop the video for a second. I'm going to go grab some of my personal hats and we'll review those real quick too. Before I show you my small collection of hats, I just wanted to show you how I store the hats to keep them dust free. I got these gallon size baggies. I get them at the Dollar Tree and I just put the hats in this and then I think I'm going to put them because now I have so many hats. I'm going to put them into one big box. So I just have like a box of hats and that's good for inventory reasons too. So when I sell a hat, I go right to the hat box and I'm going to keep it over in my one closet. And that'll help me uh, when I do sell hats because there's nothing more frustrating than to sell something and you can't find it. It's good to have some sort of inventory system. I'm not the most organized person. and I think some of us resellers are all guilty of that. Um, but I'm going to, you know, kind of do it my own way and hopefully I remember where everything is. But this one should be easy. The hats will be in the hat box. Oh, and when I ship the hats, I do not ship them in these. I take them at and out of these bags and reuse them. So I do not ship in these. I ship the hats just as is. I put them in a uh, priority box, one of those seven by seven by seven boxes that you get from the uh, post office for free because the hats fit perfectly in those boxes. Now, the only way I would ship it like regular mail 
is if I knew that this had like the, a plastic brim on it, like this one I think does, I can, I can hear the plastic. So if I thought this wouldn't get damaged through the post office, I would just fold it up like this, kind of squish it down a little bit, but I probably wouldn't because of this logo here, but I'm just saying, for example, if it was one that I knew couldn't get damaged, sending it regular mail, I would just do that. I would put it in a regular poly mailer and send it out knowing that they couldn't bend the brim because it's plastic. However, these cardboard ones, I would, I just would not do that. I want to make sure that the hat gets there and not be all like bent up, especially the brim that just kind of ruins the hat. I got my hats all bagged up. As you can see, some of them, I don't even close the fronts of them. It's not important to have that close. I just don't want the dust getting on top of them. And I'm gonna be putting them inside of a box. So I'm gonna look for a box that I can close up that has like a lid, and then I really won't have to worry about the dust. Maybe I'm overthinking this by putting them in the bags, but that's just what I wanna to do to keep them clean. I don't want to have to wash them again. <laughs> I don't want anything happening to the hats uh, until I can ship them out to their new homes. Now, earlier in the video, I mentioned that these are bread and butter items. Now, I just recently started buying hats and I'm still learning about hats. The more I learn, the better I will be get be being able to pick them and find ones that are fast movers. So sometimes bread and butter means um, something that sells on a regular basis or it's a quick flip, that kind of thing. Now, the hats that aren't here are the ones I've sold already. I had a bright yellow Tommy Hilfiger hat. I was attracted to the color immediately. I saw it from across the way in the thrift store and I picked it up when I saw it was Tommy Hilfiger, I bought it. And sure enough, that sold immediately. So it's those kind of things too. Now, the more I learn about, say, baseball hats in regards to certain teams or certain things on them, um, that will help me get better at picking hats and I suggest you guys all do that when you go to the thrift stores look up comps look up the solds uh, look up to see you know um, uh, if there's more value to some hats like if you're looking at two or three different hats like which one to buy now in some cases like I got this hat for 50 cents I'm not going to look up a comp on something I got for 50 cents at a yard sale. I'm just going to get it. <laughs> and then other ones, like I paid $2. I paid $1.99 the whole way up to like $3.49 for each of these hats. Like one, I think there's only one hat that I paid $3.49 for, which I can't remember which one it was at the moment. But anyways, um, if you're in that price range, you're going to make money on them, even if you sell them at the low end of, you know, like $12. But most of them are selling in that $15 to $18 range. So that's why people refer to these as bread and butter items. They're easy to list, easy to store, and easy to ship. And I think that's something that all resellers look for. Here is my small collection of baseball hats. I don't wear them all the time, but I do like wearing them. And so let me just tell you about them really quickly. This one I just got for my birthday. Isn't that cool because I'm a skier? And it says life is good, which is true. In fact, I just had this in a recent video. But now that it's gonna be bright and sunny out, I will start wearing more baseball hats. I don't wear them that much. Uh, in the cold weather. This is a vintage gas hat. My goodness, I got this at the outlets back in Lancaster County. I don't know if you've ever been to the outlets there, but there was a, a guest store or guest outlet there. I don't know that it's there anymore, but I got this hat there and this would have been way back in the 80s. This hat right here is because, you know, we're Eagles fans and of course I have to have my pink Eagles football baseball hat <laughs> and then uh, we went to uh, OBX for vacation I just loved the color of this one so I just thought oh that's just perfect for summer so I had to have it and I do like wearing that one in the summer and then this one I don't wear it very often just occasionally this is because I love Superman and of course it has to be all pink and glittery and so that is my small collection of baseball hats.
One thing that's funny about baseball hats is it's kind of like shoes and pocketbooks. You can never have too little or too many of them. I know my husband has, oh, he must have two, three dozen hats. He even has the special hangers to clip them all on so they're all, like, they all hang off of, like, one area that is all in a giant row. And then he has some, you know, here and there all of, all around, and he's always wearing different baseball hats. He likes to wear them uh, all the time every time he goes outside. Thank you for watching. Put any comments or questions down below. Please subscribe to my channel and I will catch you guys later.